Hi, this is Brendan from Watto Training and in this tutorial we take a look at the angle parking maneuvers for New South Wales C-Class applicants. On the driving test, the learner will be asked to do a number of maneuvers that will be selected from the following. A curbside stop, a hill start, a three point turn and parking exercises which can include the reverse parallel park, 90 degree or 45 degree front or rear to curb type depending on local availability. The learner will be assessed on their ability to position the vehicle legally, safely and accurately. Let's take a look at some general instructional tips for trainers first. Help students understand why. Have a good reason. Sell the students on the purpose and importance of the task. Be concise. To be concise means brief but comprehensive. Make what's important clear and what's clear important. And finally, break the information down into bite-sized pieces. Don't try to achieve too much too soon. Be patient, progress at the rate the learner can manage. Let's take a look at the driver setup. Before performing a maneuver, the driver must be correctly set up in the driver's seat. That includes the seat, steering wheel, and seat belt. Make sure the student's mirrors are correctly set up. Observation and scanning tips for trainers. Observation is an essential skill for safely and correctly performing maneuvers. The learner must use their peripheral vision. Peripheral vision is a part of vision that occurs outside the very center of gaze. The learner must check for other vehicles, pedestrians, and potential hazards. Learners must turn their head and check their blind spots before they move to the curb to commence the maneuver, leave the curb to rejoin the traffic, and steer if during reversing the front of their vehicle will swing into the lane. The learner must conduct a head check before proceeding. Steering tips for trainers. The learner is required to use effective steering techniques. The test allows a maximum of four direction changes for all parking maneuvers. Maneuver information and tips for trainers. Where possible, finish as close as practical to the angle required for that parking area and within any marked lines. Australian Road Rules Regulation 210. 2.2a. If the parking control sign or road marking does not indicate the angle at which the vehicle must be positioned, the driver must position the vehicle A so that the vehicle is at an angle as near as practicable to 45 degrees as shown in example 1 or 2, see next slide. And if the vehicle is parked on the side of the road with the rear of the vehicle nearest to the center of the road. Example 1 on the left, parking at 45 degrees on the side of a two-way road. Example number two on the right, parking at 45 degrees on the side of a one-way road. 2B, sub rules 2 and 2A do not apply if the road marking or information on the parking control sign includes the words rear in or similar words. 3, if the parking control sign or road marking indicates that the vehicle must be positioned at an angle of 90 degrees, the driver, A, must position the driver's vehicle so the vehicle is at an angle as near as practicable to 90 degrees as shown in example 3 or 4, and b, if the vehicle is parked on the side of the road. 1. If the road marking or information on the parking control sign includes the words rear in or front in, or similar words, must position the vehicle so that the front of the vehicle is nearest the center of the road, or the rear of the vehicle is nearest the center of the road, in accordance with the road marking or sign, or 2. Otherwise, may position the vehicle either way around. Example 3 on the left, parking at 90 degrees on the side of a two-way road. Example 4 on the right, parking at 90 degrees on the side of a one-way road. 4. If the road marking or information on the parking control sign includes the words rear in or similar words, the driver must position the driver's vehicle so that the vehicle is at an angle as near as practicable to 1 the angle indicated by the road marking or parking control sign, or two, if the road marking or parking control sign does not indicate an angle, 45 degrees, and b, if the vehicle is parked on the side of the road with the front of the vehicle nearest the center of the road, 4a, sub rule four does not apply if the parking control sign 
or road marking indicates that the vehicle must be positioned at an angle of 90 degrees. Example 5 on the left, parking rear in at 45 degrees on the side of a two-way road. On the right, example 6, parking rear in at 45 degrees in a median strip parking area. Trainer instructions for the maneuver. Driving into an interangle park nose in. Select a, a parking space. Check your mirrors and signal your intention to park. Perform a head check. Brake and change down gears as required to arrive at the turn in point slowly. When you have a clear view into the parking space, either stop or if safe to do so, slowly proceed. Turn the st steering wheel steadily and enter the parking space in the middle between side marking lines if the, if the space is marked. Straighten the steering wheel and drive straight ahead very slowly. Stop before the front bumper of your vehicle goes over the curb line, but after the rear bumper or tow bar, if fitted, is fully within the parking bay. Apply the handbrake and secure your vehicle. Your vehicle should end up in the middle of the parking space and centrally between the parking lines. Reversing out of an angle park when you are nose to curb. Conduct a 360 degree check. Make sure it is safe to proceed. Select reverse gear. Check your mirrors and look through the back window of your left shoulder to make sure the road immediately behind your vehicle is clear. Whenever you are reversing, you should be watching to the rear of your vehicle, the direction you are going, with frequent checks to both sides to make sure no, no unexpected hazards emerge during the maneuver. Release the clutch on manual vehicles or brake pedal automatic vehicles to the friction point. Release the handbrake. Exit the parking space by slowly reversing the vehicle while turning the steering wheel either to the right to leave the parking space. Reversing into an angle park. Scan ahead. Select a safe, legal and available parking space. Check your mirrors and signal. Head check left. Brake and change down gears as required and stop. When you have a clear view into the parking space and it is safe to do so, select reverse and slowly proceed. Turn, this, turn the steering wheel steadily to the left and enter the parking space in the middle between side marking lines if the space is marked. Straighten the steering wheel and reverse very slowly, keep scanning. Stop before your rear bumper goes over the curb line, but after the front bumper is fully within the parking bay. Apply the handbrake and secure your vehicle. Your vehicle should end up in the middle of the parking bay and centrally between the parking lines. Driving out of an angle park. Conduct a 360 degree check and make sure it is safe to proceed. Select drive or first gear. Keep scanning and signal left. Release the handbrake off the foot brake and slowly move forward. Keep scanning, turn the steering wheel to the left, rejoin the traffic, straighten the steering wheel and accelerate smoothly. Okay. It is also possible to incur some fail items during the C-Class driving test when performing maneuvers. So let's just go through the dot point checklist here and be aware that these must be managed by trainers when uh, delivering these maneuvers with their students. Disobeying traffic signs, signals and road markings. Failure to give, failing to give way when necessary. Colliding with a vehicle, pedestrian or object. Performing an illegal act or maneuver. Exceeding the speed limit. Action requiring testing officer intervention, causing a dangerous situation, failing to maintain proper control of the vehicle, failing to exercise due care to avoid an accident, failing to give way to an emergency vehicle, disobeying directions from the person controlling traffic, frequently not signalling in intention, refusing to attempt any part of the test, repeated or deliberate failure to follow directions unreasonably obstructing other vehicles or pedestrians, receiving external advice or instruction during the test, not parking to the required standard, failing to maintain a safe following distance, frequently not performing observation checks. Thanks for watching. This has been Brendan from Watto Training.